Welcome back. All right, so what we're going to do in this lecture is just create a really basic path HDA. All right, this will set us up nicely so that we, we can actually start to test out things like paths and roads. Meaning if we want to actually draw some sort of path between one area and another, we can do that with another type of tool and we can provide this to our level designers. Okay, so let's jump into Houdini and get started. Okay, so let's get our path HDA up and running. So we're going to build just a really basic one. So what I'm going to do is just drop down a geometry node. All right, and I'm going to call this the IP uh, basic path. All right, and I'm going to jump inside and just place a curve inside of there. Uh, because what I want to do is I want to allow the user uh, to modify this curve. All right, but I also want to actually allow the user to provide another curve. All right, so when you're using the Houdini engine, um, you also have the ability just to create a curve by itself. So if a level designer goes and creates their own custom curve using the Houdini engine menu, all right, let me actually show you guys this. If we come up here uh, and we say Houdini engine, um, you can say new curve asset. All right, and that allows you to basically just go and draw a curve right away, right? And so if the level designer actually goes and does that, we want them to have the ability to assign that to our path as well. But we also want to support the default curve. All right, so what I'm going to do is uh, provide or create a user provided path. And actually, let's change this to user path or user curve. And we'll change this one to default curve. How about that? I think that's much better, actually. Cool. And what we can do is we can drop down a switch node down here. All right. And we're going to say that the default curve is on by default because the switch starts at zero. All right. And we're going to say that the user curve is uh, the second input or the index of one for this particular switch node. Okay. And the way that we can actually detect whether or not the user has actually assigned a curve to this object merge node right here inside of the Houdini engine is we can come to the switch node and we could say, well, let's look at the number of points on that particular input. So that input is input one. And if the number of points from this particular node right here, okay, is greater than zero. So if it's greater than zero, then we're actually going to switch to one, right? So this will be switched over to one like so, but you can see that Houdini is not going to allow me to do that because currently I have no user curve. All right. So if I were to actually create a geometry node over here and we'll call this a user curve, this will allow us to test this out. And we'll drop down another curve down, down here. All right. Go to my top view by hitting spacebar two. And what I'm going to do is just enter on the keyboard and we're just going to draw out some curve, nothing crazy. Cause really this, inside of Houdini here, this is really just for testing purposes. Okay. So now what I can do is I can come in here and I can select that curve that we just created. So we want user curve, All right? And you can see now that the switch node is switched over to one. Pretty sweet. And all we had to do was type in this little tiny expression in here. Okay. So if I were to actually remove this, you'll notice that it switches back to zero because we have no points. Okay. So that is the start of that. And that is actually a good place to then go and create the HDA. So I'm going to right click on this and say, create digital asset. Alrighty. And we are going to do the usuals here. I'm going to name this. And really all I do is just lop off the username and put in whatever, you know, actual name. And then I capitalize all these guys. All right. And I want to save this to my job path. All right. And that's the current project that I'm working with. And this is really important for uh, PDG. You want to basically have all your HDAs, you know, bundled up in a project, you know, saving them to the, the documents folder. It's fine. It'll still work. It's just, um, in my experience, it'll end up getting cluttered really quickly. So that's why I kind of like to break it out into my projects. Cool. All right. So now we have our type properties open here. And what I want to do is go to the node tab first. And we're, what we're going to do is go and get the default curve. 
That way this pops up inside of Unity. I'm going to hit apply and accept. There we go. And we need to go back to Houdini there. Cool. And what I want to do is I want to move those guys off screen there. And I want to go and now process this particular curve here. Okay. And so usually what I like to do is I drop down a resample node like so. All right. And I increase the maximum segment. So this is the length between each point. Okay. So let's actually turn on our point display here. And what I need to do is, is provide a default curve here. All right, so I'm going to go into my top view and let's do a curve a little bit different than the other one, just so I know that this is in fact working with the default curve here. Very cool. There we go. All right. So the, this length parameter here is the distance between each point on our particular curve here. Okay. So this distance right here is the distance of two units. All right. With that, I'm going to go down and set this to subdivision curves, something I also usually like to do because in my experience, a lot of the level designers, you know, like to have it just start out with a subdiv curve there, like so. Makes it nice and smooth. Cool. All right. So uh, the next step uh, that I usually do is I put uh, direction vectors onto this particular curve. And to do that, I'm going to drop down a wrangle node, so an attribute wrangle node. And by default, it starts out as points. Okay. And what we want to do is we want to uh, create a bunch of vectors on this line that actually kind of follow the general direction of the curve. Okay. So um, I do actually have a preset for this. So what I'll do is I'll just leave this code up there. For you guys. So this is the usual code that I use for my direction vectors. And uh, to visualize it, what I do is I drop down these visualize nodes. All right. And I pump in the particular attributes. In this case, I want to look at the at right or the right attribute, which is a vector and the up attribute, which is also a vector. And so um, the attribute that I want to start with is right. And I want to set this particular attribute as a marker and we want it to be a vector. There we go. And I also must note that before we create the line or curve directions, so curve dirts, we need to actually provide some normals in the first place. Okay. So we're going to do a poly frame like so, and I'm just going to set this to my flow normals. Okay. So that's the, the setup right there. And you can see by doing that, I now have my right direction and it's always perpendicular to the curve. All right. And I like to actually set this to red for the X direction. Very cool. And then I'm just going to copy this guy and we're going to do the up vector. All right. So let's do up and let's color that to green. There we go. All right, so our normal basically follows the direction. Let's try to zoom in here. So the normal follows the direction of the curve. Our up vector is constantly perpendicular to the up direction of the curve. And our right vector is always perpendicular to the right of the curve, basically. So if I were to go and edit this particular curve here, you can see that these directions will constantly update appropriately. Cool. And that's what we need really so that we can uh, uh, go and copy a line to this. So let me push this off to the side there. I, I, I do like to leave those there because um, I use them quite often just to, as a verification type of process. So we're going to call this our width line like so. And I'm going to do a sweep. All right. And we're going to feed that into our cross section and our backbone. And what I need to do is actually set up the line. So that way it's actually in the, it's pointing or the width is pointing towards the Z direction. So I do have another preset set up for this and this is the X dir line. All right, cool. And this allows me then to basically center up the, the curve here and control the width. So the width, you know, starting 
could be something like 10, it's 10 meters, all right? It's about 30 feet. We'll do like five. There we go, that, that's pretty good for a, for a path. It's pretty wide. All right, so uh, what I wanna do now is actually turn on the sweep node here. And you can see that we're actually getting the path or our width line copied to each point, all right? And it's also following the direction. And if I were to change the curve direction here or the curve points, you can see that it's also following, you know, all the directions that we just set up. And that's perfect. That's what, exactly what we need. So what I'm going to do is set this to one primitive at a time and set this to skin with auto closure. And there you go. Now we have a path. Or at least we have a start of a path. This is the most basic path that you can actually create. All right. Cool. So I'm just going to drop down a null node here and we're going to call this out path. Cool. And I want to go up and out by hitting the U on the keyboard and I'm going to right click and go to my type properties window here. And I want to make sure I get rid of all these guys. So we're going to mark that as invisible and I want to go in here and expose the width of my path. So we'll call this our path uh, width. And it's always a good idea to name your actual parameter as well. Okay. Uh, you know, it, it'll totally work by just keeping the name, uh, the default, you know, when you, when you promote the actual parameter, but you know, when you start getting these larger HDAs, you really want to name these because you're going to come up with a lot of, you know, duplicate names or names like, distance one or distance two, distance three, and that's not really going to help you in the long run. So uh, just type in an actual name for your parameters. All right. So I'm also going to go and set up the range for this. So the range, I'm going to say it can't be any less than, you know, three meters or three feet, I should say one meter. And the max is fine. We can leave it unlocked, uh, but 30 feet is a pretty wide pass. So I'll just leave it there. Okay, and we'll set the default to five. Hit apply and accept. And there we go. So now we've got, you know, a single parameter up here that allows us to control the width of our path. And that'll actually be perfect because what we want to do is we want to save this out and then test it inside of the Houdini engine inside of Unity. Okay, so in the next lecture, what we're going to do is we're going to do just that. We're going to test this out and just make sure it's all good to go. And we'll start adding more parameters to this and more features. Thanks so much.